My name is Jake, and I've always considered myself a fairly successful guy. Good job, loving wife, cozy suburban home, you know, the typical American dream. But sometimes I felt like something was missing. Some spark, some excitement, you know? Especially when I looked at Emma, my mother-in-law. Don't get me wrong, I didn't have any inappropriate feelings towards her. I just admired her zest for life, her energy, her passion for new experiences, and especially her love of photography. As long as I can remember, Emma always had a camera with her. Snapping photos of family, friends, landscapes, just interesting moments. She had a keen eye and a great instinct for good shots. Everyone around her kept saying, you should do this professionally. But she'd just wave it off, like, no way, I'm self-taught. I could never measure up to real masters. But I could see how her eyes lit up at the word photography. How she'd pore over the works of famous photographers with rapture, sighing, if only I could learn to do that. Oh, Emma, Emma, if you weren't such a dutiful wife and mother, who knows? You might have conquered the world with your talent. That's exactly why when I got the chance to make her dream come true, I jumped at it with both hands. I saw an ad for a photo expedition to Yellowstone, and I knew right away, this is it, just what Emma needs. A chance to break out of the routine, to be herself, to realize her creative potential. And also, I'm not gonna lie, I was dying to participate myself. I mean, I was no stranger to photography either, albeit at an amateur level. I used to dream of a career as a photojournalist, doing reportage from hotspots. Only life had other plans. Long story short, without much deliberation, I booked two spots in the group, and I rushed over to Emma with the joyful news and a ready-made plan. Barged into her kitchen where my mother-in-law was just baking her signature muffins and blurted out, Emma, pack your bags. We're going to photograph Yellowstone, you and me just like real National Geographic staffers. You should have seen her face. Shock, disbelief, tentative hope. And finally, genuine delight shining in her eyes. Jake, are you crazy? Yellowstone, what Yellowstone? My muffins will burn. And anyway, I have a family, grandkids. Where would I go, why? But I could see that the excitement had already gripped her. That same hunting thrill I noticed every time she picked up a camera. Oh yes, Emma was ready to rush into battle. I just had to set her straight. Come on, Emma, I teased, squinting slyly. You've dreamed of becoming a real photographer for years. Are you really going to miss this chance? And you can teach me everything while you're at it, too. Just imagine, the two of us, the wild sunrises and sunsets. Romance. Oops, I probably should have kept that last phrase to myself. And what got me into the sappy stuff anyway? But Emma didn't seem to notice. She just resolutely untied her apron and nodded. Oh, to hell with it. You've talked me into it. Let's go conquer Yellowstone. My daughter and father-in-law will survive a couple of weeks without me. The main thing is that Martin doesn't forget to pick up the kids from kindergarten. Martin is her husband, by the way, an easygoing hulk of a man, always off fishing somewhere. Sometimes I felt like he took Emma for granted, sort of a comfortable home base that he could always lean on. But she's amazing, extraordinary. Women like that are worth their weight in gold. Ugh, there I go again, getting carried away. I'm not myself today for some reason. Must be the anticipation of adventure going to my head. Yeah, adventure, of course. No innuendos, s'il vous plaît. Anyway, after a parting kiss-hug feed the cat to Martin, we set off to conquer Yellowstone. Me, my mother-in-law, two backpacks and the unknown. Truly, there's no turning back. It was like something out of a dream. Surreal landscapes, heat-shimmering air, bizarre geysers. And in the midst of all this magnificence, Emma and I, two hunters for the perfect shot. The first couple of days, we acted like kids at Disneyland. Ran around the park, clicked everything in sight, oohed and awed in delight. Just your model tourists. Except our cameras were way more serious than your average vacationers. Speaking of equipment... I was surprised when I saw Emma's solid SLR with a set of professional lenses while packing. How much money do you need to collect a set like that? Wow, Emma, I whistled. You've got better gear than some pros. Been secretly saving up for equipment behind everyone's back? My mother-in-law just smiled shyly. Guilty as charged. I've been quietly setting aside money my whole life, skimming off the family budget. Wanted to work with serious equipment at least in my old age. 
It's like I knew that one day it would come in handy. And it sure did come in handy. In Emma's skilled hands, the camera worked real magic. Watching how deftly she handled the settings, how she captured the very essence of the landscape, I was simply amazed. Now that's talent multiplied by perseverance. At some point, I even felt awkward about my modest camera, and even more modest skills. How could I ever reach that level of mastery? The old sage was right. I know that I know nothing. But Emma, noticing my embarrassment, just waved it off. Nonsense, Jake. Everyone starts small. The main thing is the desire to learn and grow. And you've got perseverance in spades. I know that much. And she winked mischievously. Oh, those sudden mood swings of hers. One minute she's serious and focused, the next she's laughing like a girl and sparkling with mischief. Just try to guess what Emma will be like the next minute. Like right now, just a second ago she was talking inspiringly about framing a shot, and the next moment she's dragging me by the sleeve to some puddle. Jake, look! I think we can get a great reflection shot here. Let's try to line up the perspective like I showed you. And I obediently plopped down next to her, trying to maneuver and catch the shimmering surface of the water in the lens. Click, click again. I think I'm starting to get the hang of it. Out of the corner of my eye, I noticed Emma looking at me approvingly, like an artist at the successes of a diligent student. And something sweet flinched inside me at that look. Damn, it's nice when someone believes in you, when they see not just a bumbling amateur, but a person with potential. That's how we worked side by side, sometimes competing to see who could get a better shot, sometimes helping each other. We learned laughed, shared impressions, and in the evenings, settling down in the hotel, we would spend a long time going through the footage. Look, Jake, Emma would lean over my shoulder, pointing at the laptop screen. Here you can see the play of light and shadow, but if you had stood a little to the left, it would have been even more expressive. Her hair tickled my cheek, her breath warmed my skin. At moments like that, I would strangely lose concentration. I had to force myself back to reality remind myself why we were here. And we're here solely for the sake of photographic art, right? Damn it, what am I thinking about? Emma is my mother-in-law after all, a close but still an outsider. And besides, we both have families, some obligations. I can't give in to this delusion, this haze. But with each day spent next to her, common sense receded further and further. Only a vague excitement remained, a sweet trembling of anticipation, and a strange, disturbing certainty Something is bound to happen. It will definitely happen any moment now. One day we decided to get up early to catch the first rays of dawn. They say it's the most blessed light for landscape photography. So soft, pastel, romantic. Yawning and stretching, we trudged to the lookout point, settled on the parapet, got our cameras ready, and around us, not a soul. Only the occasional bird song breaks the silence. And the sky is already turning pink in the east promising the imminent appearance of the sun. Beautiful, isn't it? Emma suddenly said quietly, nodding at the horizon. You know, at moments like these, you acutely feel the grandeur of nature and your own insignificance against its background. I glanced at her, surprised by the lyrical mood, but my mother-in-law was staring into the distance as if immersed in some thoughts. Yeah, impressive, I agreed, readying my camera. Sometimes it seems like our everyday problems and worries are such trifles on the scale of the universe, and you're also amazed at how much you miss while spinning in the wheel of routine. Emma nodded, not taking her eyes off the horizon. Exactly, Jake. You know, when I was young, I didn't even dream of such a luxury. To drop everything and go off into the unknown, to do what I love. Work, family, endless running around. But life is passing by. Her voice held such bitterness that my heart sank. I wanted to hug her, comfort her, to say that it's never too late to make up for lost opportunities, to fulfill old dreams, to discover something new in yourself. But before I could open my mouth, Emma suddenly turned to me. Her eyes were dancing with mischievous sparks. But anyway, what am I moping about? The past is past, but now I have a whole world of possibilities. Take this sunrise, for example. Isn't it a miracle? And your company, Jake, also a gift of fate. With those words, she lightly squeezed my shoulder, a friendly gesture, nothing more. But I felt like I'd been struck by lightning at that touch, as if all those vague desires and fantasies smoldering in the back of my mind suddenly flared up at once. 
There must have been something like that reflected on my face, because Emma suddenly got serious, pulled her hand away. Jake, what's the matter? She asked quietly, looking into my eyes. Did I say something wrong? No, no, everything's right, I wanted to scream, even too right, too correct. But out loud, I only said, I'm fine, Emma, just thinking about my own stuff, about life, about priorities. You said, a gift of fate. And here I was thinking, how many such gifts have I missed, not noticed? My mother-in-law was looking at me strangely, as if trying to read my thoughts, to understand what was going on in my soul. And I suddenly realized, this is it. The very moment when you can either dive headfirst into the pool or retreat to a safe distance. But before I could make up my mind, the first rays of sun burst over the horizon. Emma immediately raised her camera and started clicking away enthusiastically. The moment of revelation was lost, or maybe postponed for better times. With a heavy heart, I also got down to shooting. Click, click, click mechanically catching the golden light in the lens, the play of shadows on the rocks, and I seemed to be watching this scene from the outside, two people on the observation deck, almost touching shoulders, awkwardness and unspoken words hung between them. You're a fool, Jake, I said to myself mercilessly. You're making up all sorts of silly things, lustful fantasies, and Emma is your mother-in-law, a close person. You just need to appreciate what you have, friendship, understanding, and no advances, okay? But my heart ached for some reason. Unbidden thoughts kept returning to that brief moment of unity, to the spark that flashed between us. It's all nonsense, a delusion. That's how I reassured myself all the way back. Stole glances at Emma, focused, absorbed in her work, tried to convince myself that everything was fine, that I was just tired on edge. It happens to everyone, right? Only the cats were scratching at my soul. And in my head there was an obsessive thought, what if? What if I do take the risk, give in to temptation? What if this is the very fateful chance that you can't miss? It's now or never, kept pounding in my temples. But I was a coward. I was hovering on the threshold, not daring to step over the line. Oh, come what may. I'll make one last push today. Either I'll fall bravely in battle, or I'll fall from my father-in-law's shotgun. No kidding. I was a wreck for the rest of the day, like I had a fever, couldn't sit still, could barely sit through the last seminar on macro photography, nodded inappropriately, smiled, even clicked something. But my mind was already far away. Finally, they announced the end of class. I rushed to Emma before I lost my nerve, grabbed her by the elbow, God, what tender skin, looked into her eyes, Emma, we need to talk right now, it's important. My mother-in-law raised her eyebrows in surprise, but nodded, allowing herself to be dragged away from the crowd. We turned onto a narrow park path, walked a little further into the shade of a sprawling oak tree. I swallowed hard. This is it, the moment of truth. Make it or break it, come what may. Emma, I began, feeling the blood rush to my cheeks. I have to tell you something, confess something. My mother-in-law looked at me, attentively, probingly waiting for me to continue, but my tongue seemed to stick to my throat. Well, you see, I like you, I blurted out and squeezed my eyes shut. I like you very much, for a long time now, as a woman. There I said it, the words hung between us, heavy, unwieldy. Even the birds seemed to fall silent, as if waiting for Emma's reaction, and she was silent, for a long, agonizingly long time. I got nervous, risked opening one eye, and froze. Emma was smiling slyly, knowingly, and her eyes were shining with that same mischievous sparkle I loved so much. Jake, Jake, she drawled, shaking her head. You finally figured it out, and here I was wondering when you'd work up the nerve. My jaw dropped. What do you mean, you were wondering? Did she all this time? About me? No way, that can't be. Wait, I stammered, blinking rapidly. So you... you too? Emma snorted, stepped closer, pressed herself against me with her whole body. My knees almost buckled at this sudden closeness. Of course, silly. Did you really think a woman would just drop everything and go off with a man to God knows where, without any ulterior motive? Her breath tickled my neck. The scent of her hair made my head spin. I wasn't thinking straight, couldn't grasp what was happening. I only felt that I was falling, flying into some unknown abyss. But Emma, I protested weakly, we can't, it's not right. You're my mother-in-law. 
She rose up on tiptoe, looked into my eyes. Her gaze was full of challenge, excitement, anticipation of something forbidden. To hell with the rules, Jake, she whispered right into my lips. Don't you feel it? We've waited so long for this. We've put it off for so long, been such cowards. But now is our chance. Let's use it to the fullest. And she kissed me with a hungry, demanding kiss. I gasped, staggered, but immediately responded, crushing her in my arms. My God, this was better than I could have imagined. Reality blurred, lost sharpness. Only the heat of her body remained, her insistent caresses, her whispers in my very ear. I think we sank down onto the grass. I think clothes flew off of us. Then everything merged into one colorful, dizzying whirlwind. It was madness, pure insanity. We made love right there on the park path. We were going crazy with passion. She arched beneath me, clawed at my back, moaned out loud. I don't know how we didn't get caught. I can't imagine what would have happened if there had been passers-by nearby. I wasn't thinking about anything at that moment. I was just riding the waves of stunning, incomparable pleasure. And then we lay on the grass, sweaty, stunned by what had happened. Emma curled up, resting her head on my chest. Silent, absently tracing patterns on my skin. Jake, what have we done? She suddenly asked, not looking up. What do we do with this now? I felt cold inside, not this. Anything but a lecture on morality. Anything but regrets. I can't take it. Don't regret anything, I said hurriedly, kissing the top of her head. What's done is done. We're adults, Emma. We'll deal with our own demons. Emma sighed softly, propped herself up on her elbow, looked at me, seriously, probingly. You're right, we need to face the truth. What happened between us? It's not just a fling, not a moment of weakness. It's stronger than us, Jake. Her words sent shivers down my spine. God, does she really feel that way? Am I not just an amusing toy to her, but someone she actually cares about? What do we do? I asked helplessly, stroking her shoulder. How do we move forward? Emma smiled sadly, touched my cheek, ran her fingers over my lips. I don't know, darling, I really don't know. But one thing I can say for sure, I don't regret anything and let the whole world wait. Here and now, it's just you and me. As for the rest, we'll figure it out. With those words, she kissed me, tenderly, tremulously, and I thought only one thing, come what may. My life will never be the same now. I've tasted the forbidden fruit, and damn it, I wanted more. To hell with the consequences. To hell with the whole wide world. I have Emma, and I'm never letting her go. Even if I have to go through hell, I've made my choice, and I will take responsibility for it, no matter what it costs me. We spent the next few days as if in a feverish delirium, making up for lost time, reveling in our newfound closeness, running off at the first opportunity, into the woods, to secluded corners of the park, making love to exhaustion, to mindlessness. Photography suddenly took a back seat, and the whole world seemed to fade into the background. There was only the two of us left, and the passion raging between us. Of course, I understood. This can't go on for long. Sooner or later, we'd have to go home. To look my wife, my father-in-law, in the eye. Somehow explain these changes, this obsession with each other. I was tormented by my conscience, haunted me at night, gave me no peace. I gritted my teeth, suppressed the desire to confess everything, to destroy my familiar little world to hell, to start all over with a clean slate. But Emma, she's not free either. She has a husband, a daughter, grandchildren, for God's sake. How will she look them in the eye? How will she explain why she suddenly dived headlong into the maelstrom? Jake, enough, she said one day when I brought up this conversation again. We don't need to decide anything in the heat of the moment. What's between us? Let it stay here. In Yellowstone, you know? What do you mean? I was taken aback. Something painfully clenched in my chest. Are you suggesting we just forget about everything? Pretend nothing happened? Emma sighed, stroked my cheek, looked into my eyes. God, how I loved her in that moment. To the point of madness, to the loss of pulse. No, darling, never forget. But we must... Slow down, you know? Take a break. Go back to our families. Think it all over. And then, whatever happens, happens. I was silent, biting my lips. I wanted to scream, climb the walls with frustration. What the hell kind of break? I just found her, just got a taste of our love, and now I'm supposed to hit the brakes. But deep down, I understood. Emma was right. You can't just break other people's lives on a whim like that, even if you really want to. 
We need to think it through, weigh it out, make an informed decision, not act rashly on emotions. Okay, I forced out, my tongue barely moving. I understand. Let's do that. We'll go home, take a break, and then we'll see how it goes. Emma beamed. Hugged me, kissed me, tenderly, gratefully. And my heart was bursting with bitterness and longing. Is this really it? Is our story going to end before it's even begun? The last days in Yellowstone flew by in a haze. We tried to stay away from each other, not to be alone. Once again, we threw ourselves into photography, into work. Anything not to think, not to remember. It wasn't working out too well, frankly. I was languishing, catching Emma's wistful glances. And I understood, nothing is over yet. This is just the calm before the storm, a temporary retreat. Sooner or later, feelings will take over. And yet we had to hold out, grit our teeth and endure, for the sake of our families, for the sake of a semblance of normalcy. Although, of course, what kind of normalcy can there be? Everything went to hell the moment our lips first touched. On the last evening before departure, we sat by the campfire, watching the sunset, sipping wine, silent, avoiding looking into each other's eyes, afraid of not being able to resist, of losing control. And then Emma suddenly turned to me, took my hand, intertwined our fingers. Her eyes were shining, whether from the drink or from the impending tears. Jake, I want you to know something, she said quietly. No matter what happens next, these days with you, they were the best of my life. I regret nothing, and I'll never forget. I swallowed. My nose tingled. My throat tightened. Me too, Emma. I won't forget either. You, you made me the happiest man in the world. Even if only for a little while, she sniffled, buried her forehead in my shoulder, wrapped her arms around my neck. I stroked her hair, kissed her wherever I could. Cheeks, temples, earlobes. We'll get through this, I whispered as if in a delirium. We'll definitely get through this. We'll survive this separation. And then whatever happens, but I won't leave you. You hear me, I'll wait as long as it takes. Emma just pressed closer to me clinging like a drowning man to a straw. And I knew she would wait too. No matter how long it took, a week, a month, a year, we will meet again. It can't be any other way. In the morning we parted, with heavy hearts in separate cars, like strangers not even hugging goodbye. Just a long, piercing look through the windshield, and that's it. Ahead lay the harsh weekdays, pretense, masks, playing to the audience, we had to learn to live without this searing, irresistible passion again, to lock it up under seven locks, to bury it deep in our souls. I knew it wouldn't be easy, that the days would seem like months and the nights an endless torture. But I had an anchor, a guiding star, Emma and our crazy, reckless love. Life has taught me to cling to a glimmer of hope, to wait patiently for my chance. And one day, I was sure, fate would reward us for our suffering. But for now, we had to keep living. To carry our cross without grumbling at the villain fortune. To believe that everything happens for a reason. And our story with Emma is just the beginning of something bigger. Something beautiful and inevitable, like the dawn itself. Yes, the separation will be excruciating. Yes, loneliness will become a constant companion. But it's worth it, damn it. Every moment spent together is already with me forever. Sweeter than honey more intoxicating than wine. Yellowstone gave me the greatest miracle of my life, and I will keep this secret in the very depths of my heart, cherish it like a rare, flawless diamond. Someday Emma and I will grow old. She'll grumble that the years haven't been kind to her, and I will kiss her wrinkles, call her my queen. We'll sit in rocking chairs, flipping through photo albums, and remember that magical August in Yellowstone when the last straw broke for each of us. But for now, we have to keep living. Secretly write letters to each other, call, catch a painfully familiar silhouette in the crowd, and believe with all our hearts, one day we will be together again, despite everything, in spite of circumstance, because true love is worth waiting for. Even if the wait stretches into years, it's worth it. To the last breath, to the last heartbeat. I've made my choice, and I regret nothing. Thank you, Emma, for being you, for being mine. Someday we will definitely dance our victory dance. To the applause of the whole honest company gathered for the grandchildren's engagement. But for now, until we meet again, my love, I will wait, as long as it takes. Even if this torture lasts an eternity, it's worth it, believe me. 
for I have no one and nothing more precious than you, and I never will, until the end of time. Did you like this story? Let us know in the comments what you liked. Subscribe to our storytelling podcast. Also, don't forget to like and ring the bell so you don't miss more interesting stories. See you soon.